Hi everyone, hope you're keeping safe and well. The words unprecedented, unbelievable, unreal, unheard of are some of the words that we've been hearing from the press these days. This could go on for a long time. And at home here, we've been discussing hairdressing issues. You know, Carol can do mine, but I don't think there's any way I'll be doing hers. So this new time is a time to recalibrate. It's like a sabbatical from the usual rush of life. Time to enjoy God's presence, to listen and to understand what he's saying and to enjoy and appreciate his goodness. It's a time to reconnect with family and friends in new ways. Also a time to rethink church, to wake up to what's important. In our situation of the coronavirus, for many, the top priority is staying alive physically. For the church that we're going to look at in Sardis and Revelation, we're thinking about staying alive spiritually. Let's look at the passage from Revelation chapter 3, Revelation 3 verses 1 to 6. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works or your deeds complete in the sight of God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It's a reality check, isn't it? A wake-up call to the spiritual life of the folks in Sardis and also to ours. The city of Sardis was very wealthy. It was set in two locations, one on the mountaintop, one on the valley below. And originally it was busy with trade and traffic. But in the first century AD, it lost its influence. The church there is unknown in terms of its origin because it seems it was never visited by Paul, but may have been a church plant from Ephesus. The letter from Jesus to the church in Revelation 3 is one of the most severe of the seven letters. Like the city, the church had lost its life. There was no trouble or heresy. There was no attack, no strong persecution, but the church was no challenge to Satan's kingdom there, and it slowly conformed to the society around it. So Jesus rebukes the church in verse 1 of chapter 3, Revelation. He says, as a body of people, you're like a graveyard. Others might say, what a live church you have in Sardis. You've got a good congregation. You've got a program of projects. No shortage of money, talent or manpower. No false doctrines. You've got a reputation as being progressive. But Jesus says, I know your deeds. I know your works. Dressed in beautiful grave clothes, but underneath there's a corpse that's rotting. It's a bit like scaffolding on a building. If there's no construction going on, what good is the scaffolding? In verse 2, Jesus says to the church, I find your deeds are not complete in the sight of God. What was Jesus looking for? I think he wanted to see people becoming more like him, more disciples formed, and an increasing compassion for others. Also, true fellowship between the believers. And Jesus is really looking for that in our lives as well, for reality in his church. In verses 2 and 3, after the rebuke from Jesus, he gives a remedy. What can be done with a dead church? Jesus says, first of all, wake up. Strengthen the good. Remember what you received. 
keep it, obey and repent. Jesus is saying you can be revived. Keeping watch is an activity that the people of Sardis knew all about. Because more than once, actually twice, I think it was, the almost impregnable city had fallen to surprise attacks because they were careless. Also, there were robbers lurking in the mountain caves above the city and they would swoop down and steal from the inhabitants. Jesus says, you know how to look for dangers physically, but watch out spiritually even more. He says, strengthen what remains. And that word strengthen means pastor. Paul uses it in Galatians and Romans. New Christians need to be strengthened. Like babies, they need to be nurtured and loved. And Paul also says in Romans 1, it's the use of spiritual gifts that strengthens and produces growth and maturity. That constantly refilling of the Holy Spirit is what builds up the church. You can see that in Ephesians 5.18 as well. So in verse 3, he says, Remember what you received and heard, obey it and repent. In Ephesians 2, it recalls what actually they did receive and hear. It was about being dead and being alive with Jesus. So looking back and remembering is often good because it challenges us. and It can provoke something in us that says, do it again, Lord. But was it just the good news that Sardis had to look back to? Sound doctrine alone cannot bring life. Knowing the Bible alone cannot bring life. The church at Sardis had received more than God's word. They had received the Holy Spirit. Just like the disciples in John 20, when Jesus breathed on them, they received the Spirit. And the day of Pentecost, Peter said, receive the gift. Remembering is good, but there's also a time to look forward. Isaiah 43, 18, 19 says, Forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert, streams in the wasteland. Bill Johnson writes, True believers are being positioned to display the wonders of the Almighty God to the world around us. It's time for the people of God to rise as one and display the power and glory of God. Also, this is a time to acknowledge God in your life to others. In these weeks of social distancing, for example, how about being bolder in your messages, your texts, your WhatsApp phone calls to family and friends, those who don't know Jesus yet. Talk about the peace you have, the lack of fear, about praying for them. Well, what about the folks that you see working in supermarkets and hospitals and volunteering, health centres, pharmacies, security services? Greet them with a godly blessing. and uh, This is what God wants us to do in this situation. He wants us to acknowledge Jesus here because one day he's going to introduce us in heaven to our Father and his angels. It's going to be amazing. Revelation 3, 4 and 5, Jesus promises to those who overcome. He says, they will walk with him in heaven. They will have their names written in the book of life. They will be acknowledged before the Father and his angels. You can see that in Matthew 10, 32 and Luke 12, verses 8 and 9. So what are the signs of life in a church? How can we know if a church is living or dead? This is maybe not an exhaustive list, but these are four evidences. First of all, growth, particularly in the character of its members, People also are being born again. They're confessing faith in Jesus because life always shows growth and development. Secondly, compassion. Love particularly for the lost, for those who are from difficult backgrounds. The church is a place of refuge without prejudice. Thirdly, unity. Unity of the spirit, preferring one another, accepting one another, serving one another. Disunity and disintegration is a sign of death, but the working of the body together in all its parts, functioning well together is a sign of life. 
And fourthly, emotion or excitement should be there. I remember when we came to the barn in 1997, we were through an emotional time and we had been in recovery mode from working and living in a war zone for some time. It was very moving to come and be part of a vibrant church, and it still is, because life includes tears, singing, laughing, mourning, grieving, and the church that lives is full of laughter, tears, and breaking into song, and silence when it's needed in a time of pain or suffering. If these are lacking in the church, it's probably dead. To have a reputation of being alive as a church is not enough. Jesus says there needs to be reality, there needs to be purity and the Holy Spirit filling. So did the church at Sardis listen to Jesus? There's some evidence that they did. At the end of the second century AD, one of its elders called Melito was the first person to produce a commentary on Revelation. So the church must have taken Jesus' rebuke and repented and as a result, they prospered. Let's humble ourselves before Jesus today, asking the question, what do I need to keep alive in you, Lord? O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us. Revive your church with life and power. O oh, breath of life, come cleanse, renew us, and fit your church to meet this hour. God bless you all.